we met uh, earlier with James Brokenshire and we told him from Sinn Féin's perspective that when the talks resume they need to be on a very short time frame and focused on an early resolution. Uh, and of course we are entirely committed to having the restoration of the power sharing institutions here and the executive, but that can only be on the basis that people who live in this part of the world are afforded rights uh, which are protected in all other parts of the island, such as the, the uh, rights, Irish language rights, the uh, right to marriage equality, the right to coroner's inquests. Uh, and there could be no credible executive established where some rights are protected of some citizens and other right, citizens are denied their rights. We heard nothing new from the Secretary of State during our meeting in relation to how these talks would be conducted. It's our clear view, and we've been saying this since January, and we've been as frustrated as I'm sure you and the general public watching, that these issues could be resolved within a matter of days. And it's very clear what the issues are, it's very clear where the gaps are, it's around rights-based issues. They need to be, as I say, the people who have rights in all other parts of these islands uh, that are promoted and defended. It needs, the same thing needs to be happening here. Uh, and so we want to see the British government make that very clear, that they support that. Uh, and we want to see a focused, short time frame for these talks to get an early resolution. We have no interest in dragging this process out right throughout the winter. I've seen some of the exchanges over the weekend since some of the commentary made by uh, the Taoiseach. Uh, you know, the reality is the DUP have been acting against the wishes of the majority of the people here in relation to their approach to Brexit. They have now given the British government a blank cheque in terms of signing up to supporting any Brexit legislation that's brought forward. Uh, so they can hardly then complain when those who will be disastrously impacted on by Brexit then call that out for what it is, or who present issues as they are likely to arise. Uh, and quite clearly the Irish Government and the Taoiseach uh, have to defend uh, the interests of the Irish people, and we look to them to defend the interests of Irish citizens who live in this part of Ireland as well. Uh, so the DUP can hardly uh, criticise others when they are acting against the best interests and wishes of the vast majority of the people on this island. Uh, the reality is, is we recognise, as does everyone, including the DUP privately, that Brexit is going to be an economic disaster for the island of Ireland. And I think in those terms, we do look to the Irish government and to the EU uh, and our representatives who are out in the EU, our four MEPs, uh, to defend the interests of the Irish people in that regard. I, I hear very clearly the, uh, an administration which recognises the disaster that's looming for us in terms of Brexit. Uh, and I wouldn't expect them to be anything else but robust in the defence of the interests of the Irish people in that regard. So it is, the statements have been welcome, of course, uh, but that's what you would expect. Uh, the, the political leaders of a country who is going to be so badly impacted upon by a decision which was taken in London in the interests of the English people uh, and not in the interests of the people in Ireland who quite clearly in this part of Ireland uh, voted significantly not to leave Europe. So uh, I think it's understandable and uh, I, I think it's uh, very normal for the Taoiseach to represent the views of Irish citizens the way he's done. I am glad that he is doing that and I look forward to a robust defence of our interests uh, and, and it's a support for our position of special designated status for the North within the EU on the other side of Brexit.